Welcome to another episode of Low Gear. I've had a few emails lately asking me if I've ever had any motorcycles on the show. In particular, the old English Triumph. Well, yes, we did do a show on the old Triumph with Kenton Short, who's a New Zealand Triumph guru. And so for all you old bikies, I'm going to take you back to that show. But before I do that, let's take a look at a New Zealand modified Mack truck. Clinton and Clinton, welcome to our little show. Thank you. Have you enjoyed the run so far? Yeah, been very good. Good holiday. Excellent. You've been following the trucks from Wellington up to the North Cape and then back down to Wellington, up one side, down the other side, but it's been absolutely amazing. And a, a great turnout of trucks, wasn't it? It was something like 90. It was amazing. Yep. Yeah. And you've got a, a very special truck, and I've seen a lot of Max in our travels, but I, I've never seen one with a, with, a, with a bonnet like this. Perhaps you could just talk us through the the bonnet uh, it? was a truck that was developed by Motor Trucks in Palmerston. Um, one of their clients wanted a um, better turning circle, so they set the front axle back. Oh, okay. And consequently, they designed the bonnet and they were built no techy and with the slope in front on them. And there was only approximately 50 of them ever built. 5 0. 5 0. Wow. Ever built. And um, yeah. So when you're talking about a sloping, is this this little slope? No, this is a bit on here. Oh, on here, because oh, okay. the normal R model, the front axle's 14 yeah. inches further forward. Oh, okay, so that means it turns. Yeah, it's got a better turning circle, and yeah. And they did that for logs? I see no, it's no, they. Um, I don't. Not too sure what the client was. I think it was a dairy company. Oh, okay. They got, got them built. And, and what's the engines in it? Just a just a 400 uh, four valve Mac motor. Oh, okay. Is there anything in the cab that's different? No, no, it's just a basic R model. And oh, okay. that, oh, these got the Superliner cabs on them for the um, where the bonnets sit here, but that's the only difference. Oh, okay. I know on those Superliners you've got a sort of more, you know, like a tennis court sitting out in front yeah. of you. Yeah, oh, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, I haven't, as I said, I haven't seen one like this before, so. It's, yeah. And how many would still be alive of the 50? I don't know. I asked um, the boys at Motor Trucks, but they didn't know. No. They said it was, yeah, this, we see a few around from time to time, but not many. No. Oh, well, I think yeah. what we're going to do, folks, is we'll jump in this thing, we'll just drive it around Barry Caulfield's yard, where we are here, and then just have a good look at it. And we've seen you travelling on the road around yeah. some of those corners, and uh, look very, very nice. So we'll jump in, kick her in the guts, and go for a bit of a black cut block. Clinton and his family were part of the 2014 Northern Classic Commercials truck run where we went from Wellington to North Cape and back again. We've seen excerpts of that run during Series 1 of Low Gear and the DVD of this is available. Just note the information on the advert coming up to find out how to get your copy. Good on you Clinton. Enjoy your truck. The 2014 Northern Classic Truck Run DVD is now available. Join the boys and girls as they travel from Wellington all the way up to North Cape and back again stopping along the way at some interesting places with some great truck driving camaraderie. This two hour DVD set is $40 and you can get your copy by calling me on 0953653327 or visit our webpage www.lowgear.co.nz With me is, is Kenton, and welcome to the show. Thank you, Kenton. Bill. And Mark was, was a, a 1960 Thunderbird, and this is something quite different, although it looks the same. Yes, this is the um, Tiger 110. It's the same year, uh, 1960, but um, these were deemed to be quicker. They had um, hotter cams, um, the, uh, they, have a, they had a magneto as opposed to a distributor, and a few other um, bits and pieces that, that made them um, faster, um, and these were the the pre-runner to the Bonneville. So this is this is what pre-run the. Oh, okay. okay. So the yep. Bonneville hasn't been invented yet. Yes, they did. They did. An, uh, they had a Bonneville in uh, the first year. of The Bonneville was 1959, oh, yes. but they weren't. Um, they had a problem problems with the frames and so on, a few other minor hiccups. So yes, they they were invented, but um, I think that's why the Tiger 110 
um, sort of finished in, in, in 61 because um, they started to develop the Bonneville, and I think mainly for the American so market. there's still research going on. That's, that, that, it was trial and error. These weren't popular? No, no. Uh, well, n no, they weren't because uh, the, A, the bathtub. The bathtub was beginning, it, it, uh, it made it look old. Um, people, even though the Triumph advertising sort of tried to promote them as a, uh, as a, as a means of, you know, for younger people, they didn't want that. They wanted a uh, single mud guard and, and uh, uh, smaller tanks, the whole, the whole nine, the whole nine yards, you know, it was... Uh, and uh, there I say it, it looks, you know, it's starting to look with it, with it pulled in bit here, a bit like a scooter. I mean, if you just call up out here. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Forward, you've got a scooter. We've been, we constantly get called scooters or tigeresses, which is a bigger insult, yeah. which was well, the, the scooter. Well, the was, we, we saw one in our travels, the yes. tigeress um, Is a scooter, scooter. yes, yeah. 250cc button, and I thought yeah. that was just enormous for a scooter. Yeah, yeah, it certainly was. <laughs> Moving on to the next, this is 1961, and we've, we've come forward. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And uh, I see that it's gone blue. Was there a reason for turning it blue? Kingfisher blue it, it is the colour. It's what it's called. It's called Kingfisher blue. Um, other than the fact, I think that the, uh, the they were trying to get into the American market, and I don't think the Americans liked just the plain black and white. Um, so I'm 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 picking that they they tried to make it a bit more um, blingy for the American market. So this and this was the very last year of the Tiger 110. In the uh, night and and the bathtub on Tiger 110. They did do them on the Thunderbirds in '62, but this was the last year for Tiger 110. Well, Kenton, we've moved up to 1964, and um, the bathtub's gone. And what we've got here is, well, uh, somebody said the half the half uh, bathtub. Half bathtub or, or bikini fairing. That's right. They they started that in 1963 um, when they first came out with the unit construction engine. Um, and the unit construction engine meaning? Meaning that the gearbox and, and the motor are all together. The previous two motorcycles we looked at are what they call pre-unit where the, the gearbox is actually separate to the um, uh, uh, to the rest of the engine. Oh okay. So we've got a bit more room through here I see. Got more room um, and they seem to go better or they just seem to be a lot more tidier and um, less less problem I guess. You know, just in so, so, so two years down, look, well, three years along the track this is what we've come to, and it's a, sort of uh, the um, the heads are all alloy. Still. That's right. That's correct. They um, the the difference um, the colours are still much the same. Well, they are the same. Um, black and silver sheen. Uh, it still has a nacelle, uh, the, the the carry rack on the on the tank. Um, but uh, they were hoping that the uh, with the bikini fairing it will it would make well it does it makes things easier to work on the back and make it look a little bit more attractive um, for, the, for the Americans for the Americans that's right but yeah you were and saying before that they actually sold more bikes in America than they actually sold in England and in you know, the Commonwealth that's correct that's really? right yeah the the, the by um, America was by far um, the the biggest market for. Um, triumph and even the word Thunderbird. Edward Turner um, stayed at a, um, a motel called the Thunderbird, and that's how they 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 think that the that he came up with the name. So right, right. Um, and Bonneville because of the Bonneville Flats and so on. You know, in so America again. In America again. Yeah, and that's a speed thing, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. Yes, that's right. So what's this reputed to do, speed wise? Uh, well, I I I, I guess um, well the police used them here in the in the 60s so I, 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 I guess it would it, it would comfortably be 90 miles an hour I, uh, um, I wouldn't want to go any faster on it to be honest Bill. Oh, okay. Is that because of the vibration or is that because of the brakes? <laughs> the brakes mainly. <laughs> the, 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 um, or lack of. Or lack of brakes yeah they the, 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 the brakes they I don't these days they they just they're not really um, up to it you have to really drive a quite defensively sure. you know, to it's stop. been said that these things leak oil um, yes they do um, but um, thank goodness they invented modern sealants because oh, okay. um, with a good modern sealant you can actually make them quite oil um, oil tight um, and um, and you can always tell of the um, whenever you stop somewhere people say oh, why it can't be a triumph it's not leaking oil you know it's a part of a must part of the Kiwi culture, I think, but <laughs> <laughs> but they don't. They you, 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 a modern sealant will 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 fix it. Will fix it. 
So when this came along, all the people who didn't like the bathtub, all the bodgies and all the, you know, the teddy boys, etc., ah, they're starting to look like a bike again. That's correct. They, though, don't forget, um, in in the early 60s in New Zealand, um, to get a, a bike in from overseas or any vehicle, you needed overseas Pretty funds. Fun. Yeah. So um, because the police were bringing in Thunderbirds, these bikes were always on the market here after the police had used them. So the um, I think everybody would have preferred a Bonneville, but because the police were bringing uh, bringing in these, and, and and as I said, because of the, um, uh, the you know it's to get a good second-hand bike, that's what you had. And that's probably why there's so many, or were so many Thunderbirds in New Zealand. I don't know what you've done in your life as a career, but did being a policeman riding one of these things ever cross your mind? <laughs> no, not these days. It would it would be you'd um, something I'd, back in the time. No, oh. Yeah, yeah, probably, I don't, no, I don't think I would like to have done it. You wouldn't thank have you. the heart. No, I wouldn't, no. <laughs> Doing our tickets all day long. No, I wouldn't, no. Being no. the bad guy. I've got to tell you the story, folks. About, uh, oh, about ni early 1970, this um, Auckland City Council sort of ran the, you know, the traffic department then. Anyway, this bike's all immaculate. He pulls up, pulls this person over and he gets off it, helmets off, sunglasses on, soft hats on and gloves are off and, and he sort of looked at the bike and he said, yeah, that's fine. And he starts walking towards the, the person he's going to give a ticket to and his bike fell over. Oh, cop no. the wind, bang, <laughs> crash, and the sun fell off all over the place and his helmet went roll, roll, roll. <laughs> and there's about 100 people watching him and they're all cheering. <laughs> so he got back on his, clicked all the stuff up, got back on his white and bucket off and the guy didn't get a ticket, but I think he was probably too embarrassed. <laughs> oh, yeah, but it was just so the way he just sort of, everything was just, you know, just so, and then the whole thing turns to custard. But anyway, a fantastic example of this. How easy would one of these to be to find these days? Um, this one we restored. We found um, the engine and the frame. It's very important to try and get the engine and frame um, in tr on triumphs. Um, and we were lucky enough to find the the um, the frame and the cases. Um, and the rest of it, we basically had to rummage around swap meets and so on oh, okay. um, to do it. Um, to find one complete these days um, is very very difficult. Welcome to the Mahindra Memory section. Well, this odd looking tractor in uh, Milton's little tractor shed here is called a Newman. And it's just a, a round, it hasn't actually got any grill or anything. <laughs> and it looks like just a, an opposing cylinder little motorbike engine in here. Just on the front here, it has got a little place for a crank handle. But if you look underneath, just follow me around here. It goes from here, and you can see up under there there's a shaft that comes all the way into here, and that turns the engine over. So that's a, a long shaft to be cranking this little engine way back here. All the working controls, everything a tractor should have, but there you go. A Newman. Must be American. Edward Gibbon, the bathroom specialist, have a great range of bathroom ideas at their showroom at 23 McGlashan Ave in Richmond. Call in and check out some of the latest bathroom designs and fittings. Edward Gibbon, the bathroom plumbing and drainage supply specialist, 23 McGlashan Ave, Richmond. I'm Francis from Nelson Auto Glass. We repair all auto glass, stone chips, windscreen replacements, scratch removal. If you have an auto glass issue, our team will sort it. Nelson Auto Glass Specialist, 84 Vanguard Street, Nelson. The Bonnevilles started in 1959. Oh, okay. um, um, this is a, a, a 62. Well, um, this is when they got it right. I this is when they got it right. This is when they started to get rid of the bathtub. Um, this, um, this was the bike for the 60s. There's no two ways about it. Yeah. The, uh, the and they increased at horsepower? Oh, uh, well, CCs? Um, no, not really. They, um, but they, they just the, the cams. They upgraded the cams, carburetors, the whole, the whole thing on the on the on the Bonneville. They were, as I say, they were the milk bar cowboys. The um, 
Ton Up Boys, the, the calf bod- racers, the, the bodgies, and the the bodgies that's the one. Yeah, yeah they. Yeah, this of... has got the, 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 the gearbox separate. Again, this is the pre-unit. This is this is a very rare motorcycle. This was a New Zealand uh, new uh, Bonneville. It, um, it actually entered and won street races in Whangarei, uh, but it's a, a very a very good example of, of, of a pre-unit Bonneville. I see the colours of sort of looking at across the, all these things, the colours have sort of they've decided to expand on the colour a wee bit rather than black and silver. Yes, they yes, that's right. They, they again, um, I think it was simply to attract uh, uh, younger uh, buyers, and also in America, everything um, was needed to was was uh, focused on the American market. Uh, I see the the uh, the mud guards got the little blue stripe. Was that and, and that as have you know sort of the. The, the mudguard sort of combination of whatever the tank is. Yes, that's that's what they that's what they did to, to, to match it in that. They they uh, Edward Turner was the the one that uh, initiated all this sort of thing. He 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 had quite an eye for colour. <laughs> okay, so mm. this is sixty two, and next door is sixty three. Nineteen sixty three. Nineteen sixty three. The first of the unit construction Bonnevilles. It was a uh, uh, people chased the fifty nine Bonnevilles, but I think. The 63s were important as well because they were the, as I say, the very first ones of the, the all the later Bonnevilles and, and so on with the unit construction motors. So um, yeah, they it still had the um, the pre-unit forks um, and brakes, unfortunately, <laughs> but it was still. Um, but it, this was the first. This was so, so. When this came out, everybody went from this and went, "Ooh, look at this." Well, that's right. They well, they, these this this uh, model. Um, Basically superseded. Yes. This this model. So what's here. the difference between the two, if any? Well, the, the engine is the the pre-unit engine, right, yeah, the right. pre-unit engine, and uh, um, and things yeah, like right. that. Yeah, and things like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah. I see. This has got a little um, a little toolkit on the front there. Is that is that something that happened? Or that has... was that was just a little bit of a a, a, a blingy extra, oh, a blingy okay, extra. After market stuff. Yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, after yeah, market. Right. Yeah. Did they ever have the little lip over here? Like yes, they did. Them? They um. Um, they all did, but we, um, I've, what, my ones, I've put them onto the Thunderbirds and the, oh, but they okay, look, they look yeah. nicer on than the cells. Sure. But and the, this is 650. CC. A 650, yeah. Well, they all are. They all are, uh, uh, um, except the later one, the, from about 73, 72 onwards, they came, they were, um, up to 750. Right. But the, so the engines, the actual engines in 62 and 63 are, are identical? More or less? More, same CC rate. Uh, I, th- I think slightly, the a, a bit more cubic, uh, oh, okay. slightly yeah. more. Um, so this was a bit gruntier than that. A bit gruntier than that, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, the other thing, on the in the last program, you asked me about uh, traffic um, cops and um, being chased. Well, this was, you can imagine, look how light and small this is without all the radios and all the yeah. equipment. Um, the police didn't have a chance. They just could not catch them. So um, the old Thunderbirds and so on. They were um, so. This is why they were, these were so popular. Awesome. Oh well, what's next? And so we've gone 62, 63, and now we're up to 64. 64. There's um, now th- this one was they basically the same as the 63. Um, a few different things that they changed the forks in 64. These are much more the, the more modern forks and a lot more made the bike a lot more stable. Um, they um, they also put um, air breathers, these these air breathers on them. These were unique to 64, 65, um, and the the the, the, the gauges are, are different on the. the yeah, I think they they've went got them. a bit sort of classier. Yes, they it's have, and, and and these were again, these go um, the opposite way to the more modern bikes, the later ones, and again these were these gauges were only on the 64 and 65 models. So right. you, could, you can see they're just slowly prog- progressing, progressing, yeah. progressing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, oh, and they, again, they, um, they, up, they put the gold, the Alaska, um, Alaskan gold, I think it's called, on the tap, you know, to make it a bit different to the 60. So they're all the same? They're all, they're all the same, all the same. These I are mean, the colours, they're all the same. Um, yeah, they're, yeah, that's right. They're all the, all the, basically, all with, the, with the whites always the same, but the tops are changing. They changed every year. Oh, okay. So you can just about tell the model by the colour. Yes, just about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, also, you, these uh, these Americans are all, these models are all American models, and you can tell by the higher handlebars. Uh, when we move on to the 
to the, uh, one of the other bikes, the 69 for example, that's got it, the English style handlebars which were genuinely lower. Oh, okay. They called these Western handlebars. So the Americans like to sort of sit up straight. They like they 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 like to sit up straight and yeah, <laughs> the way they go. Yeah. Yeah, right. I just noticed the size of the wheel. It, it just seems to be a bit bigger than perhaps the. the no, all the 19. Next, they're all 19 inch. Okay, and is has that, is that um, helped the ride? Yes, it does. Yes, they, um, it's and it makes it much better. The that you could in England for some reason the English models um, uh, the 19 inch was a an, an extra. They brought them all out the same size as the old Tiger 110 and Thunderbirds in 18 inch, but all the American models came out with the 19 inch yeah. front wheel. Yeah. Awesome, 62, 63, 64. And, and this is the creme de creme, the 1969. Um, this, this? this one, yes, this is the one everybody um, craved. So it wasn't Woodstock in 69? It was Woodstock, you're correct. Um, first man on the moon, oh, okay. 69. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, the end of um, the, the um, flower power era, you know, 1960. Yeah, so the hippies sort of, the, hippies the last chance to be a hippie. That, like, get a 1969 <laughs> Bonneville here. Yeah, so, yeah, wow. So this is the year, um, I don't, they're, they're quite, quite um, they said this is the last year. In fact, it wasn't, there was um, Bonnevilles in, in 1970, which probably had a few extra goodies on, which were made them um, better than the 69, but, it's a 69 everyone seems to want to. I, I just see looking at the uh, little air cleaners at the back here, they're black, and on mm. this one they're chromed up a bit. Also different cubs. In, in, the, mid, uh, in the mid 60s they went from the, uh, these are called monoblock carburetors, yeah. um, and they, they went to the amyls. These, so these, they're a different style of carburetors, and on the later ones, on the, from uh, the 72 onwards, they went to uh, a Makuni. Did they, did they ever get to fuel injection? <laughs> no, not, only, on the, only on the Hinkley Triumphs. Oh, okay. But I, I know very little, if nothing, about those. Oh, okay, fair mm. enough. Mm. Um, fuel injection is something I thought was a good invention. You know, but a, a, we saw an engine it was built in 1918, fuel injected. Oh, really? So what, what sort of bike was that? It wasn't a bike; it was a so. stationary engine. Oh, okay. But it had fuel injection, and it was made from by the Japanese. Oh, That's interesting. Isn't it? it is. It is. Yeah. So there's nothing new in the technology. I, they thought of it. And it didn't go anywhere and put on a shelf somewhere and then somebody else oh that'd be a good yeah, idea but you know it's all been invented it's all been done it's all been there's nothing new nothing new at all so this is the uh this so is the the, the, the this bike is that the, everybody the, i still see the tanks are slightly different as well this is what they call a peanut tank um again the americans wanted a a smaller style a smaller tank um to make it look a bit more uh, just a bit more racy you'll see that these are all a, a bit bigger. The English ones had quite a bigger tank again. Uh, that one there is, an, is, is uh, on, on the 70, you'll see how much bigger that is. It's a, it holds an extra, at least another gallon of petrol. Sure. Um, so, it's, so it looks good, but it doesn't take him any further. It, you, uh, in <laughs> fact, it, it, it's, it's, a, um, it's a nuisance because you have to stop to fill up all the time. Obviously, in America, they, they, obviously the petrol stations are closer or they didn't go as far as what we do here in New Zealand. Sure, yeah. And the, uh, the little the gauges, gauges are exactly the same, except they, they spin the wrong the other way. So now we go, yeah, this is the last of the, uh, of the uh, uh, Bonnevilles that before they went to the oil in frame model. I see the uh, brakes look like they've got a the, bit better with the, a bit of cooler the, on the The brakes, back. yes, the brake. These are twin twin leading shoe. Um, they're much, uh, they are, they're much, you, you can stop on these. That's one of the advantages is the um, 69 also had them as well. So it makes it, it a lot safer to ride. Um, this model here, um, they also had an air breather coming out of the engine here, which was unique to 1970. Um, this is another part here um, to get the lift of the engine in and out of the frame, which you had to do quite regularly with triumphs when they break down. Um, this comes off, whereas, um, so, you, so it makes it much easier to remove the engine. And that, that was again unique to um, at 1970. So, so what happened in 1971? 1971, they, they went into oil in frame, um, oh, okay, and yeah. the, the, the motor, the, 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 they were much taller the bikes, um, you couldn't were, get the and engine they, and out. they weren't called Bonnevilles? Uh, no, they were, but they weren't, they were just not, they just didn't make it against the Japanese, they weren't. Um, oh, okay, so then you've got competition. competition you've got so much competition. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. And, and they slowly developed, 73, 
is a good year for oil and frame. They, they pretty well got it right by 73 through to 79. Um, and then is that what that is? That, 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 that is what this one is, yeah. So that's pretty much getting close to the last of them. That is very much. They um, 79 was the last they made at the Meredith factory. They made them for three years after that at um, a guy called Lynn Harris. Um, brought all the all the, the casts and so on, and he made what they call a Harris Bonneville, um, which are, um, there's still a few of those in New Zealand, but they were a bit of a disaster, I understand. And the Bonneville name? Bonneville lives on. It lives on with Hinckley. Oh, who, who, whose idea was that? Uh, again, Edward Turner, because oh, okay. they um, uh, on the pre-units they they put two together and they and they they raced up the Bonneville fl um, flats and uh, so they so they called them the Bonneville. They it actually um, they didn't recognise the record in England, but they did in America. So what's lesser than the Bonneville? I mean, what were they building? Lesser bikes, you know, like smaller bikes? They were 500, uh, the Tiger 90, the Tiger 80s, Tiger 90s. At um, the same time? 500 cc's, yes, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Okay. And anything smaller than that? Um, uh, no, not really, no. no. Just the Tiger S, but that fell over when? Uh, um, the, well, they were pretty early in the piece, the, the whole <laughs> scooter market. I think I think when the, the mods and rockers sort of fell, fell in, the whole, the whole thing fell apart. Though right. they're quite collectible now, those, um, yeah. those Tiger S's. And sure. So, yeah. Yeah. so this is the this was the the, the Bodgie's dream. Everyone this was Egypt made it. That's right. You know the uh, the girls loved them, uh, the police hated them. <laughs> <laughs> so it was uh, yeah that was that was the bike to have. It was the bike to have. Kenton, this is. A triumph but this is starting to get back a bit and if we can you know what we we're talking about before was that the bar tubs and the half bar tubs and the sort of the early 60s bikes what year is this one this one's an, a 1937 tiger 90 um, th th this was probably the first um, Edward Turner again uh, when he took over from in triumph um, he he got them to look more blingy um, and this is what he did to to the tiger 90s it's called a Tiger 90, it presumably it can do 90 miles an hour. Um, however, if anyone's game enough to try and do 90 mile an hour with, the, with these girder forks, good luck to them I reckon, because it, um, it's not a, uh, I, I, I wouldn't want to try it, but that's why they called them. And then they had a, this is a 500cc, um, they had a, a Tiger 80, um, uh, which was a 250, uh, sorry, a 350, and then a Tiger 70, which was a 250 all basically in the same frames and uh, basically the same shape but uh, I see it's got a, a cast um, head there. Yeah cast oh, kind yeah they're, they're, that's that's right they completely cast the the rocker boxes are all aluminium they used to crack on them and uh, what makes these bikes so um, so rare is that they were built in Coventry and of course the, the Germans uh, bombed Coventry um, to the ground um, in, in uh, because the English had bombed one of their cathedral cities or something, so so these are, are, are very very rare because of the the fact that they um, there's just no more and there's no um, no bits no bits no no they, they, all, they all got bombed in the war so so I was very very lucky. <laughs> well, thank you very much. Kenton. That, okay, was, an thanks, thanks that again. was an absolute hoot. And uh, there you go, folks. 1937 Triumph. Awesome.